So Australia's making a pretty substantial donation to Solomon Islands, uh, a, a total of 60 semi-automatic rifles, uh, fairly serious ones, uh, as well as just over a dozen police vehicles. So some fairly substantial kit. Now, what's the difference uh, between what they've given today and what they've given in the past? Well, this is the first time that Australia's actually taken the step of handing over semi-automatic weapons. Typically in the past, uh, we've handed over simply firearms like Glocks, uh, and the like. Now we're making the move slowly over time towards both equipping and training the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force uh, with more sophisticated, uh, high-powered weapons. So this is a process, if you like, of rearming the uh, the police force in the wake of the uh, the terrible uh, national turmoil that, that really gripped Solomon Islands around the turn of the millennium from about 1998 to 2003, uh, before Australia led an intervention uh, with the Ramsey mission. What we saw in that period was real chaos in Solomon Islands. We saw police armories raided by militias who were vying for supremacy in Solomon Islands. We saw people uh, essentially extorted by militias uh, as they wrestled control of the, uh, of the country. When Australia came in at the head of Ramsey in 2003, what it did is it declared a gun amnesty, gathered a lot of uh, illegal weapons, uh, and then they destroyed them. Some of them were symbolically burnt, uh, in, in fact, in public in Solomon Islands. And for a number of years, Solomon Islands police carried no weapons whatsoever. The police force is now gradually beginning to rearm. This sort of started slowly in 2013, gathered pace in 2017, uh, and now we're seeing these more serious, uh, serious guns being handed to Solomon Islands police force under an agreement struck by Australia and Solomon Solomon Islands last year. What's the thinking behind this, Stephen? Is it is it trying to counter the fact that China has had an increased involvement in Solomon Islands policing in recent years? So there's no doubt that that's how this will be seen. I think that's unavoidable because over the last year, Australia has been watching with growing unease uh, China's increasing police cooperation with uh, with Solomon Islands. We've seen them rolling out training programs in multiple provinces. Uh, we've seen a police team uh, temporarily embedded in, in Honiara with, uh, with the RSIPF there. Uh, we've also, of course, seen a fairly large contingent of 30 plus officers from Solomon Islands going over to China to take part in training. Now, all of this makes Australia quite uneasy. Uh, and uh, understandably, it wants to do everything possible to try and push back against that and preserve Australia's position as the security partner of choice. Now, all of that said, Australia is insisting here that this latest move isn't directly linked or certainly isn't a direct response uh, to China's uh, growing police cooperation program. It's been pointed out uh, that this agreement was actually struck back in July 2021. Now, that's about six months before China very suddenly moved into the police cooperation space in China in the wake of those riots, uh, making donations of, uh, of uh, riot equipment and fake guns. So the implication from the government is that it's, it would be a mistake to see this as purely as a response to China. They say this was underway well before that competition was uh, afoot. Uh, but look, I think more broadly speaking, it's undeniable that Australia, even before China was on, on the, was in on the scene, was keen to do everything possible and remains to do remains keen to do everything possible to make sure it remains the main training partner and the main guarantor of security in Solomon Islands. And this donation of guns um, that uh, that has been made today uh, is no doubt part of that. Yeah, and of course the Prime Minister Manasso Guevara has welcomed this donation, but the opposition leader, well, he sees it very differently. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Matthew Wale, the opposition leader, earlier today put out a fairly blistering statement. Many of the opposition leader's statements are blistering, it has to be said, so perhaps it's not that unusual. Nonetheless, a, uh, a pretty firmly worded statement accusing Australia of uh, essentially being driven by that anxiety over China. Now, his argument is that decisions are being made in Canberra that are not necessarily based in an assessment of exactly what Solomon Islands needs, uh, but more what it needs to do to maintain its position within uh, within Solomon Islands and to maintain favour with uh, with the senior politicians within Solomon Islands. He's also raised concerns more broadly about militarisation, saying, look, there's no need for uh, for these weapons to be held by police, certainly not in Honiara, uh, where, uh, you know, you don't have many people walking around with high calibre weapons. Um, now, the 
argument against that, of course, is that there are still some pretty serious weapons potentially lying around, those that won't ha weren't handed in back in 2003, 2004, uh, and that uh, the police need the capacity to deal with uh, people, including people perhaps involved in, in organised crime on the border, uh, to, to deal with any threats that might come to them. But Matthew Wale, Wale is making it very clear he's uneasy with, the, uh, with both the optics and the brute reality of uh, this donation from Australia. And uh, he's certainly raising a hue and cry about it. Manasse Sogavare, as you mentioned, well, perhaps unsurprisingly, he's very happy with this. He said this morning at the ceremony that it was important that the police force was equipped with the material that they need to restore and keep order. Uh, he also said that the police need to be, needed to be treated with respect, which was uh, an interesting way of, of putting it. It's clear that he wants the police to have more capability, particularly in the wake of those riots in November last year, uh, where the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, although they did in some respects perform quite well, they were unable to stop rioters and looters from wreaking havoc, uh, then inevitably seeing Australia uh, come in once again with its own contingent of AFP officers and, and troops to, to once again restore order. So this is clearly what Manasse Sokovare wants. It's clearly what the police force wants. It's probably an inevitable evolution for the RSIPF, but inevitably, with China now very firmly in the frame, it's very difficult for people both within and outside uh, Solomon Islands not to see this, at least in part, through a geopolitical frame. Yeah, very interesting development. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Beverly. Appreciate it.